Nice heavy start to the morning. A 110 transformer. That should work. Has power anyway. That won't go on. So it's sockets damaged. And no power out. So the transformer itself is working. There's something wrong with this socket. There's something wrong with the wiring. That's where you get start to get problems with these here. Transformers on side. It's actually encased in silica sand. And topped off then with the resin. So you can't get onto here. This is all glued solid. The resin comes up. The actual screw holes for the sockets. So they're half covered in resin. So I'll not get these bolts out without digging. Fails, just saw them off. Now, what's your start? Fart or pop? Still have a red light anyway. That one's right. And that one's right. One. Working transformer, ready for work. That's her. One 3.3 kilovolt site transformer. Two new sockets. And for anybody that doesn't know, power here, the mains power here is 240 volt. Which is too high for site work, just in case anybody takes a saw up onto the roof or something. This here is a site transformer, 3.3 kV site transformer. This takes 240 volt in and transforms it down to 110 volt. Basically, it is just one big transformer. Two coils inside, 240 volt comes in, goes around one coil, which then energizes the second coil and takes 110 volt out. So, Lot safer for site work, so anybody using machines on site will have a 110 volt machine. This is what they'll be plugging it into. They can carry one of these around with them. So that's why you see me working two different types of machines, two different plugs, big yellow ones, are for these here, these site transformers. So 
So if you're working on a site with a machine, you have to have one of these here to power it. For fixing them, sockets. That's probably the most expensive job you're going to do on them, to be honest. Other than that there, you'll be fixing a lead. Maybe replacing the wee trap switch on it. That's about it. After that, you're just onto the main transformer. That's all sealed up. Even if you could get onto it, it still wouldn't be worth fixing. Things only cost about 80 euro. So once they go any more bother than that, they're not worth fixing. But that's one up and running anyway. I'll keep this boy going for a little bit longer. Next up, we have another Kiang hammer. Don't get too many of these in now. Not all that common, but they're a nice little hammer to work on and a nice little hammer to use. Good wee chipping hammer. This is the KH5000M 2017 machine. Motor sounds good anyway. Customer says it's not hammering. An absolute flying start today. Obviously, that's hammering. So, what did I leave it on for? Okay, now we got it. Hammer's no problem when she's facing down. But when it's overhead or horizontal, the hammer keeps coming off. Runs no problem, she's just not kicking. So, make it away with a wee money service on this one. It sounds like the grease is dried up on here, or the o-rings are worn out, probably the striker is going to be too loose or something. Strap her down, see what she's like. are very much like a Hitachi or a Hikoki hammer. Probably made in the same factory. But they're a nice wee hammer to use to be honest. Not the biggest or most powerful, but they are nice and comfortable. Look at that, how do we nup? Pinched from the factory, maybe. Seems tight enough. You can do a complete service on these. You can get a kit for them more than likely, or you can buy the parts individually. Strap the whole thing down, redo it. But this one actually isn't all that bad looking. You've got a grease leaked out here, but that could just be from the grease put onto the chisel. I don't think she needs a complete service. Yeah, that's your striker on there. It's too free. If I drop that on, it's just flopping all over the place. Needs to have some sort of resistance. Mind you, that o-ring looks okay, but obviously it's not getting a complete seal. I 
think we'll get away with a quick wee mini service on this one. We'll just wash it all out, get rid of all this old grease. New grease in here, maybe a bit heavier stuff. Two new O-rings. I think that might cure it. Generally, where all the gunk gets built up. I say that may have been over greased as well. A lot up on that head. Placing them two rings so we get them off, cleaning them behind them as well. Be all we need one set of o rings. Now, rebuild. We could have grease to begin with, it's just lighter stuff. But I'm actually going to put heavier Bosch grease onto it just to give it a better seal and a better chance of running the way we want. Just that there, Bosch grease 001 is a heavier grease. Wrong stuff for the machine, a wee bit harder on the motor, but once it actually gets up and running, it does a very good job of sealing up for the hammer. Same o ring for the piston and the striker. Just make sure that's well lubed up.
Now if you wanted to go any further than this, you could strip down this whole tool holder. I took out these steel balls so I didn't lose them. This here top end actually unscrews. You can take out the actual tool holder itself, the striker pin and everything inside. But this should be good to go the way it is with new O-rings. Try to tell she is good. Down in here is your actual striker pin. This is what hits your chisel. You can see it down here as well. That should move freely back and forth. It only has a limited travel. If there's any resistance, any catching or snagging. If it doesn't move at all, you'll have to open this up and replace that striker pin or else the seal's inside. But that one's fine. We'll get away with a bit of fresh grease and rebuild it. I'm just using this lighter stuff to begin with to make sure everything has a coat of grease on it. A wee bit on there too. So it works its way down. And also, I just like to put a thicker layer on this edge too. It has a wee bit of reserve basically. O-ring always goes to the piston side. Yeah. Sounds much better. Actual tight seal. You don't need a massive amount of grease in this. About 30 or 40 mil should be plenty. Looks a lot here, but that will work its way up through the rest of the hammer as well. So there'll be less in here at some stage. You don't want to fill this cavity up. If you fill it up completely, you're just going to cause problems. The hammer itself won't actually work either. So too much grease in it, it won't get the proper compression. That o-ring was pinched. I don't have a replacement. And it's not actually broken. So as long as it's installed this time, it'll keep the grease in and it will seal up. It should be fine. Knife the tool holder, a little dab of heavy grease on each of these holes, just to hold the balls on, a wee dab in there as well, for the pins. Then this is your lock, actually lock in your rotation on your chisel. And this is a spring lock you have to overcome to actually pull it up to move it. I 
that's just one C clip, holds the two together. Pins or paws that would actually hold your chisel in. Now that end cap, I didn't replace this. That is the original one. Nothing done at all on this machine. And lastly, this little rubber sleeve for your comfort. soft grip for you to hold on to. She sounds good. Nice one. One Kiang KH5000M small chipping hammer up and running again. Two new o rings, wash out, and some grease. Simple as that. At 60 euro, is actually a cheap enough fix to that. Gets her running again like a new hammer. Motors are still perfect on it. Like she's beaten like she should. One thing I must remember to do, order these o-rings again for the next one. I only had two in stock. I need to order another two again. Don't get too many of these in, but you do get them the odd time. So it's worth having them o-rings in stock. Next up we have a Dewalt cordless grinder. This is the 54 volt Dewalt grinder. DCG414. One time wonder. If you rotate it, she'll sometimes start. worth checking but to be honest it never is. Dirt in the contacts. Chance it just in case. No. Right. Open her up, have a look. But one note I would like to say anybody's looking at these Dewalt 54 volt grinders. Good machine, great power, great for work. If you're needing something like this here it is good but my recommendation don't buy these things. I do not recommend these things at all. And I'll show you why. Because it potentially could be what's wrong with this one. Get under here. Get rid of these filters first. Just for stopping the dirt getting under it. Burden cement. Right. It's rusted in there, look. Shaft rusted anyway, and the armature's rusted.
That is why you shouldn't buy this machine. That is your switch. And on any machine, cordless or corded, switch is one of the main things that can fail. Eventually wears out, or like this one can get full of dirt. Dirt gets inside, stops making contact. Don't think the switch is the problem on this one. I think it's actually the controller for the stator. She's not picking up the rotation. There must be a dead spot. She's not picking up the location of this rotor. That's why she's not starting. But switches do fail. This switch you cannot buy separately. As you can see, the switch is just a standard Dewalt switch. One screw pulls it out, four screws for the wires, very easy to change, but you can't buy it. Dewalt will not supply you this switch. To buy the switch, you have to replace all the insides of this machine. Everything except for this yellow cover. In other words, that is just designed to fail and designed to be dumped once that switch gives out. Instead of spending 20 or 30 euro on a new switch, you would have to spend a few hundred on a new machine. So if you're looking for a grinder, don't be going for the 54 volt, simply for that very reason. This is just more disposable crap that doesn't need to be thrown in landfill. If the switch fails, you're not fixing it. It would cost you nearly the price of the machine just for this year electronic unit, for that whole motor unit, including the switch. That's no good. Cop yourself on Dewalt. It's the same for the mixing drill, the 54 volt mixing drill. If the switch gets bother, you're buying a new machine just because of the switch failed. Again, same sort of setup as this. You can replace the switch, Dewalt just will not supply it. So if you're looking for a grinder, I don't recommend these here. These are just eventually going to be thrown in the dump every time there's a problem. Buy something more reliable, something you can fix if it goes wrong. So the only thing I'm going to do with this is give it a quick clean out. Things not starting all the time is to do with whenever you rotate the rotor, it's sometimes wrong. It's either going to be a simple fix or a no fix. Clean out the whole body, blow it all out. Sometimes dust or metal shavings can start to interfere with the Hall Effect sensors down in here. Give a false reading, start confusing the confuser. Sometimes it can be that. Give it a quick clean out, check it out then. Other problem. On the rotor, bearing's not good, but there's nothing wrong with it. One other thing is as we tackle here on the end of the armature, this here is a separate magnet. So there's four segments of this, which the Hall Effect sensors read for giving feedback into the controller to allow the machine to run, monitors the speed and the position of the rotor for the field to know what segment of the field to energize to make the rotor keep rotating. Sometimes they can break. That one's fine. You can see the four separate segments. If it breaks, like any magnet, if you break a magnet, it'll actually then produce two magnets. So if one of the end segments were to crack, you would end up with an extra magnet, which will confuse the confuser more. Not the case. That's fine. Dust is cleaned out of it. That's all I can really do. Hall effect sensor is part of the motor. Everything else than that, no matter what it is, even if it's just the cap on it, which that one's fine, or the switch, I can't do anything with. That motor's one solid piece and probably costs as much as the machine itself to replace. So only thing I can do is blow it out and see if that fixes it. If it's not that, it's not been fixed.
Did we get lucky? No. In other words, not worth fixing. Let's replace that whole motor to get that working right again. Now next up we have a mystery. The Kita Planer is the DKP 180. Brand new Makita Planer, only out of the box. Sold to a regular customer buy stuff off us all the time, no reason to display them. Didn't work straight out of the box and he says there's sawdust inside the box. Which there definitely is. This is a bit of an odd one. Didn't care that it's been used, didn't care there's sawdust in the box or anything. Problem is, she doesn't work. Totally jammed. You can hear that spindle there. You can see the covers pushed out. This here we pulley spindle is actually threaded onto this drum shaft that is unthreaded. It pinned itself against the cover. Brand new. How did it get like that? See, still works. That's an odd one. Clearly this has been used before. And this is just a factory fault. It wasn't put on tight, so it's hard to do that. Gritty as well. No, it's just plastic. Where it rubbed against the housing. Just where it rubbed against this plastic cover. There's nothing actually wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the spindle. Drum turns free, blades are set, and this has cut before, has tracks down it. The blades have cut timber before, so it has worked. I think I'm concerned about how did this unthread. Because this threads on one direction. This is a standard right hand thread. This one's a left hand thread. So when this machine's running, she's forever tightening the spindle. So the only way I can see this coming off is if the motor ran backwards. Working fine. And she's going this way. Does correct. Right. I don't see why that would have come off. Yeah. This was just the inertia that actually took it off. She stops suddenly. That stops very fast. More stops dead. And this drum is actually an aluminium block, so it has quite a bit of mass to it. So once this stops dead, this is going to keep on going, just for a little bit. 
which is going to cause this to unthread because the belt's holding this in place. Just for the looks of it, the only thing that's actually wrong with this is it wasn't tightened up. So this is just a bit of an oddball one. That pulley mustn't have been tightened in the factory. It doesn't need to be tightened very much, but it must have still been sitting slack. So once she ran, she ran no problem, but then when she stopped, the inertia of this drum unthreaded it. That must have been all it was. There's nothing else wrong with that. That's all it needs. That's the cover still alright as well, that doesn't crack. That's an odd one. An odd one, but a simple fix. Next up, it's actually a Metabo Hoover. Now I don't think there's very much wrong with this thing. It's running and it's working. The problem is, when he's inside working, chasing a wall, doing whatever, he's using a wall chaser and he's cutting track in the wall using this to take out the dust. Making sure there's no dust inside the house. Problem is, when he uses the vibration to knock off the dust from the filters, when he switches it on again, like you just seen, a big plume of dust comes out the back. Ain't much good inside a house which you're trying to keep dust free if it keeps putting out dust. So it only actually does it whenever you use the vibration. actually bracing that there is just a solenoid and a wit and it's just going up and down banging the filters to knock off any loose dust All that's wrong here is just dust and the secondary filters. It just needs a clean out. So this is concrete dust he's dealing with. Dolls tend to get everywhere. So as you can see. Plenty of dust inside of her. These are your main filters. All that banging is doing, that vibration. It's just knocking off the loose dust. That still shouldn't get into the motor itself. So concrete dust like this just gets everywhere. It's very, very fine and there's just no space it doesn't get into. And say to here, there's other foam inserts that actually pack out the body and help keep the dust down as well. Just like up in here. This is a very coarse one, mind you. All the wee foam inserts basically just get filled up with dust. It's grand when the machine's running, sitting stationary. It's just sitting there. But when you use the vibration then to knock off this dust, it knocks off the dust on the foam as well, so whenever you switch it on, a bit more is extra. A bit more gets knocked loose to get blown out the back. So clean it all out down and that'll cure the dust problem.
But the problem is, to clean it out, you actually have to dismantle it. First problem, getting the top off. Two wee plastic hinges back here. It's actually a plastic insert that holds the two halves together. This wee square here. That's what you want out. So a finer screw works better. This is a 3.5 by 40. They are quite tight as well. So with them out, the top half can just come away. I'll we'll start with this half. Take out all the screws first. This is your motor unit. Just a cover over the top. Clean that. And this is the main culprit. So we're that thing by Brits. Lock, knocking all this dust off and that is full of dust actually feel the weight of it so first thing clean all this out main event these are always fun through it. Go to this side as well. After all that, you should be left with a bunch of clean parts, or somewhat clean parts, and a wee bit of fear. How does it go back together? Yeah, there's actually not that much to it. It's mainly just a big bunch of plastic parts. These are the most complicated, but these are what actually vibrate the machine. That just sits on there. 
Whenever that's energized, it gets pulled in. When it's not energized, it drops back. That's all it's doing. They're breaking back and forth. That one goes on there. Simple enough. This board just sits on the front. This top cover sits over the top of it all. And then the other thing is just reconnecting your lead. That's just the one little strip connector. And it's all white, it's all labelled as well. Earth Neutral Live. Now if you ever needed to change a lead in one of these metabos, that's the only part you need to take off. Three screws, takes off this handle. Two screws for your cable clamp, and that's it. Cable just wires directly into that strip connector. Very easy to do. As for screws in this thing, they are all identical. Exact same screw used throughout. Okay, get rid of that. Next up the motor body. Tricky bit here. Keep your motor in place. Get it wired on. Drop these two pins into these holes. Keeping this spring for the lock in place as well. And before you screw everything down, just click the handles back in. Just gaskets in for around the air filters. And you just press on. Drop a filter. Drop the top back on now. And you can reinstall these wee plastic pins. The hinge pin. And then lastly, reinstall these wee filters up here piece of foam or gauze whatever you want to call it up on here and that should be her ready to run Should be her. On Metabo ASR 35 ACP. Dismantled, cleaned, filters, blown out, reassembled. Thank God that's over. I need to go blow my nose. Next up, Bosch. It's just a lead.
people always complain about these weak cable clips or cable tidies they crush the leads so you always recommend that you take these off because where it breaks the lead it doesn't break the lead there the leads break up here so generally this will be fine see where the leads been moved the most it's going to be up at this point here that's up there actually broke just behind that that's always the weak spot that's what your grommet is actually for tries to dissipate the actual area that it's bending on so it's constantly bending the exact same spot it's eventually going to fatigue and break you can just cut that here and rejoint it if you want it that'll do for another while but i can't really do that here in the workshop because this is still just a used cable it could be weak somewhere else along the length maybe to rejoint it it's not going to last all that long it could last no time at all if it doesn't last customers are going to back with it complaining so we have to change the whole lot so for all the spices in it it's better just to replace the whole lot stick a new four meter cable onto it this was fixed here before so that's the proper Jura plug plugs don't even use these anymore because they're actually got too expensive to buy in. Very good plug they are. So reuse that. That's her. One new lead on a Bosch GSB 21 stroke 2 RE corded drill.